Hi everyone, my name is David Rao, and I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. You can also find my ideas on Instagram, <clears throat> on Twitter, on Pinterest, on YouTube, a variety of other places when you search for my name, David Rao, or Make Moments Matter. Um, I'm really excited to be back again this week sharing some of my <clears throat> excuse me, sharing some of my lesson ideas from this week. My hope this week is that I can share some of the lesson ideas that I'm using both for in-person lessons and also at-home lessons because I started a new rotation of lessons that <clears throat> are going to last me a ridiculously long amount of time because of this weird schedule we're on. Um, but I wanted to talk a little bit about how you might adapt or how you might change some things that you might use that you love, some things that you might uh, use a little differently. So I wanted to share um, a little bit about that adaptation, things that I'm really focusing on for at home or focusing on for in person or vice versa. Okay, so that's what I'm planning on doing. Um, I also wanted to talk a little bit about um, a few new books that I've gotten and some other things that I thought you might be interested in. So first, <clears throat> um, if you uh, hear me say like, oh yeah, that's on the links page, or let me share blah, blah, blah. Um, I have a whole page dedicated on my blog to the links and things that I share in these Monday night videos. So if you go to makemomentsmatter.org and you look on the video tab, or if you just click the link in profile on Instagram, or um, if you're on Facebook, the, the caption at the bottom of this video, you can find there's a whole page dedicated to all the stuff that I talk about. So um, that's there if you want it. <clears throat> all the books, all the links, all the resources, anything you want um, are right there. So let me talk just a, a little bit about some of the new, oh, well, before I get there, um, <clears throat> some new books that are new to me. Um, I have a whole bundle on um, Teachers Pay Teachers that is all body percussion stuff. I've been sharing a lot about that these last few weeks, um, and a lot of people have asked about that, and so um, I bundled it all together, and um, <clears throat> put it all in Teachers Pay Teachers. So if you're interested, it's there. I put a link to that in the comments. But it's just a basically like you can read on a simplified to, uh, three, two, well, two, three, or four uh, line staff, um, body percussion, just basic rhythms. Um, it, it goes from <clears throat> just quarter notes and eighth notes to quarter notes, eighth notes, and sixteenth notes, um, and, and just different varieties and patterns and things so that kids can work and work through that, the reading and the performing of body percussion. And so there's there's a lot of those. I've been showing them a lot these last couple weeks. So I wanted to make sure that y'all knew that um, if you didn't tune in last week, um, <clears throat> that I, I've, I've put that on Teachers Pay Teachers in case you're interested in that because I've talked a lot about it. Oh, and one more thing. Um, I bundled up everything that I have in my Teachers Pay Teachers store that's Valentine's Day. So that's bulletin boards, interactive games, centers, um, I mean like anything, anything I've ever made, song files, whatever that seems to be vaguely Valentine's Day related. Um, I put it all together in one big bundle and it's there if you want. Just get it all at once um, because I know that some people did that. Uh, I made one of those for, for Halloween and Thanksgiving and it saves time. So um, if you're interested, that's there too. And I put a link to that on the links page. Okay, well, let me talk about a couple books that are new to me that I'm really, really excited about um, that have come in this last week or have come in the last couple weeks and I've been using. So a few of these I featured on Instagram um, in my posts or my stories, so I just want to highlight them sort of quickly. Um, so there are three books that are sort of new-ish for me this year for uh, Black History Month that I'm uh, focusing on. I want to share those. The first one is this one called um, Black Music Greats. Ooh, here, I think I can switch. Hold on. Facebook, I'm going to try and do that cool thing where I can switch you around so it's not backwards. Yes. Okay, I can't do that on Instagram. I'm so sorry. Okay. Um, so let's see. This one is uh, called Black Music Greats, and it's from this weird uh, series. It's not a music series. It's like a series of books where I wonder if it shows me here in the back. Yeah, like um, it's got collect the rest in the series, and it's like Greek gods and heroes, soccer stars, people of peace, Super scientists. So it's, um, oh, and there's one that's just music legends. So it's not necessarily music related, but there are so many cool um, profiles in here. So let me show you just a few of these. Um, and I shared about this on Instagram and I shared, it's on Amazon Prime. And then I think a lot of you went and got it. And so then it was not on Prime. But I think that they're going to, um, I think that it's going to be back in stock. So if you just check back on um Amazon, I'm sure it'll come back on Prime. But anyway, it's not currently. So uh, Black Music Greats uh, by Oliver Kutchin, illustrated by uh, Jerome Masai. But anyway, so like you go through, it's these just gorgeous illustrations. Um, and it has, um, well, here's your table of contents right here. So if you're wondering who's included in here, let me just read a couple names. So like um, 
Earth, Wind, and Fire, Dan and Ross and the Supremes, Jackson 5, Mar Marvin Gaye, Stephen Wonder, Aretha Franklin, Whitney Houston, Erica Badu, Pharrell Williams, The Weeknd, Notorious B.I.G., Beyonce, Nicki Minaj. Like, it's so many really cool profiles. So let me just show you a couple. So, um, what's a good one to start with? Miles Davis. Okay, so it's got this really cool photo of him. Um, and then it says, Miles Davis, a genius on the trumpet, Miles Davis, blue traditional jazz wide open. After he first appeared in Charlie Parker's group, Davis went on to make musical history. His album, Birth of the Cool, was released in 1957 and was the beginning of the West Coast jazz. Miles Davis was influenced by other musical genres and mixed jazz with funk and even with rap for his final album. This helped him to stay at the forefront of the developments of in jazz throughout his career, which lasted over 50 years. So that's just a tiny little blurb here. And then it has other little details. So muted sound. Miles Davis played the trumpet with a plug in the end called a mute. This gave it a different sound. It became his signature sound and it influenced jazz to come. Uh, Colt album, Kind of Blue, is one of the greatest jazz albums ever recorded and is Davis's bestseller, with more than 4 million copies sold. Posthumous, for his final album, Doobop, uh, released in 1982, David wanted to collaborate with rap musicians. In the end, his producer, Easy Moby, had to finish the album without Davis since only six songs had been finished before his death. So, like, all these cool, like, selected discography, um, instrument, music first. It says good music is good no matter what kind of music it is. Um, determination. So, musical style, key dates. So, it's... Um, the Jazz Revolutionary. It's just this really cool, quick profile about who that musician is and information about them. Um, let's see. So then like Diana Ross and the Supremes. Um, again, it gives a little blurb about them, the selected discography, some of the greatest hits. Um, talks, uh, well, cult album. It talks about glamorous gowns, Grammy Awards, eyes, their thick black eye makeup was part of their iconic 1960s look. So just this really cool, quick profile. This would be so simple if um, you wanted to do like a musician of the day or musician of the week or a different musician per grade level or something. You have those options. So it's sort of a cool way to highlight different musicians just very quickly um, to give you a little bit more. And there's a huge variety. So like I said at the beginning, um, I named some of the names, but if you're like, oh, well, I don't just want jazz. Okay, well, there's also Prince and there's Run DMC and Tupac and Jay-Z and Rihanna. Okay, you want old and new. Well, there's definitely that. Like we just talked about Miles Davis, but you could also talk about Nicki Minaj. She's also included in here and Drake. So um, some just really cool different um, different musicians included here. And this is, it was really not expensive. I think it was maybe $7? I can't remember. So, um, really quick, sort of simple, easy, fun book um, to have included on there. And that's Black Music Greats. That's on, I have a whole list of uh, books that you may consider for Black Hair, or Black Heritage, sorry, Black History Month. Um, I, I keep thinking like Latinx Heritage Month, um, Black History Month, or any time of year. But this is a great one if you want to just pull like one per day. It's a cool one. This one is brand new to me, but not brand new. I actually bought it from Better World Books, which is like a, a discount book website um, that gets you books um, that are like uh, library discards or bought from like fire sale or wherever, or, um, you know, wherever they can get books. But this one is called uh, Mr. and Lady Day about Billie Holiday and the dog who loved her, which is, I mean, I have a dog. I love, I love my dog. So there's a fun little story um, by Anna Noveski, illustrated by Vanessa Brantley Newton. I'll just read you a page or two. Billie Holiday loved to sing. As a girl, she sang along to her favorite songs on a borrowed gramophone. She dreamed of being a star. And a star she became, the great Lady Day. But sometimes stars don't feel like shining. They need someone to listen. That's what friends are for. Lady Day's dogs were her best friends of all. There were lots of dogs in Lady Day's life. The poodle she carried in her coat pocket and the brown and white beagle. The chihuahuas, Chiquita and Pepe, she fed with a baby bottle. There was the great Dane named Gypsy and the wire-haired terrier Bessie May Muchu, who wagged her tail like a metronome. Raja Ravoy, the sad mutt she gave the grandest name, would wander off, but he always found his way home. 
So it's just this super cool, oh yeah, and then there was a boxer named Mister. Mister and Lady Day were rarely apart. She knit him sweaters and cloaked him in a mink coat. She cooked for him and took him on midnight walks. So um, a super cool little book talking about just uh, Billy Holiday and talking about a, another interesting part of her life. I love when I can have books like this that don't just say like, oh, here's Beyonce and she was in this band and she did this other thing, but like that really give kids um, a, a connection to that person and to feel that that person's a real person, if you know what I mean. Like um, it's, it's awesome that you can have books that talk about all the great accomplishments because if you're going to give a musician profile, it's nice to talk about those things um, that they've done really well and the ways that they've succeeded. But I also like letting kids see it like this person was super talented. They really achieved a lot. They're also just a real person because I want my kids to think that they can be a part of the musical world and that they can also achieve greatness um, and just like all these people. So to pair with this book, I would read this book and I would talk about, um, I talk about Billie Holiday, I might play a little bit of her music and then I would also um, read this book and give them a little bit more context. Talk about her, talk about her as a musician and then um, yeah, just give them a little, a little bit of, um, a little bit more about her life so that they feel that she's not just this like far off person, but also just like a real life person and sort of see her um, for, for who she is and see that they can be just like her. Okay, hold on just a second. Um, there we go. Okay, and then one more. Um, there's this book that I, I think I've showed you before, but I also got from Better World Books, um, another from that discount book website. It's called My Family Plays Music. It is by Judy Cox and uh, illustrated by L. Bright, or, yeah, L. Bright Brown. I know I've talked about it before, um, but it's another one where I want kids to just... Uh, this is not one that I really use for Black History Month necessarily, uh, but one that I want kids to see and I want them to see it on my shelf and I want them to see it uh, in the rotation. In fact, I use this in all different sorts of lessons throughout the year, not necessarily for Black History Month, but um, it can come in there. Um, but it just has, um, uh, you know, it has this little girl. I don't know that I ever really said her name. Um, and it just talks about all the different ways you can be musical and all the different ways, um, you know, your family can be musical and the ways that you can um, be connected. So this is my family. We all love music. This is my mom. She plays fiddle in a country and western band. She plays in honky tonks and sings sad songs about broken hearts while people dance real slow. When I play with her, I play the tambourine. This is my dad. He plays cello in a string quartet. He sits on stage at Symphony Hall in a black tailcoat and a white bow tie. When I play with him, I play the triangle. This is my sister, Emily. She plays clarinet in the marching band. We cheer and wave as she struts down Main Street in the big parade. When I play with her, I play the cymbals. So I just wanted to show you this one because it's, it's not like, oh, let's talk about this. Um, amazing, you know, singer, or this amazing musician, or this amazing whatever, but it makes um, music every day and it makes you see all the different genres you could be a part of. It shows like professionals, so it shows like someone in a marching band, someone in a string quartet, and then like how can I connect? How can I play with that person? So um, I just love it because um, I like having it sitting out on my shelf all year long. I like having kids see themselves in this book and see that they. I mean, every page does a great job of like, here's my friend, or here's my brother Paul, and he's in a rock and roll band, and I can play with him, or here's how I relate to that. So just the same way that I would use Mr. and Lady Day to make um, kids see themselves and feel like they can relate to these people who are great musicians, I use this one so that kids can see themselves and see that music doesn't have to be like professional singers. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, professional instrumentalists or whatever. It can just be like, here, who, here's who we are and here's how we're connected and here's how we can be part of that musical community. So I love that book, um, super great one. I know I've shared about it before, but I wanted to make sure that I shared about it one more time. Okay, and then a couple other books that are new to me because I went on Better World Books and I got, it's, it's always a problem. I go on Better World Books and I look and I'm like, hmm, what should I get? And so then I get the thing that I wanted to get. Like I, I always go with a purpose. Like this time it was like I needed to get 
I can't even remember which book I needed to get. Well, then I was like, oh, what else is on my wish list? Because if I'm going to get something, I might as well see what else is on sale this time. And I browse through like 298 books or like look for certain things that I'm like, I want that, you know, I want to make sure that I get whatever. So here, um, I, I somehow I got on a kick uh, last year trying to like find all the Old Lady Who books. And not necessarily like that one, you know, there's that like one line of the Lady Who books that are, the, there was a lady who swallowed a fly and then who swallowed a shamrock and who swallowed a bell and all whatever. It's like the same author. It's a scholastic. I can't, I can't even think of the original author, but all the same. I, I'm not looking for those. I, there's so much variety in the genre of the lady who swallowed a fly, swallowed a whatever books that you should go and just see what you can see. I have a whole list on Amazon of just these books. So here are some different books that are old person who thing. Okay, so <laughs> there was an old giant who swallowed a clock. This one's really fun. Actually, this is by Becky Davies and illustrated by Alina Ellis. I don't think that you could get this one new. I think it might be out of print. I I got it on Better World Books for not a lot of money, and I, I think when I looked at it on Amazon, it was like not an option to get. Um, but the, the publisher is uh, Tiger Tales. Yeah, published in the U.S. 2018, published originally in Great Britain 2018. Yeah, I don't think that you're going to be able to get this on Amazon, but it's a really cool book and you should look around for it or, or put it on your list of things to get. So there was an old giant who swallowed a clock. So uh, there was an old giant who swallowed a clock. He had such a shock when he said, I got to sing this. Right. There was an old giant who swallowed a clock. He had such a shock when he swallowed that clock. Tick tock, tick tock. So I think this is great, number one, because it shows a grandfather clock and how often do kids see that? Not as often. And when I want to do like, uh, you know, all the nursery rhymes that involve a, a grandfather clock, it's like, I think they got to know what it is. So this gives um, a visual. Ooh, and it's also one of those cutout books, right? Okay, so you can cut out and see he swallows the clock. There was an old giant who swallowed his knitting. All in one sitting, he swallowed his knitting. He swallowed his knitting to muffle the clock. He had such a shock when he swallowed that clock. Tick tock, tick tock. So it still says tick tock, tick tock right there. And then it has um, the knitting that he swallows. Okay, so let's see what the end. Um, oh yeah, it get, this one gets <laughs> this one gets really epic. Okay, so he swallowed the moon to soak up the sea. Not very clever, I'm sure you'll agree. He swallowed the sea to wash down the boat, which twisted and turned and got stuck in his throat. He swallowed the boat to pull in the net, which. We, he will regret that he swallowed that net. He swallowed the net to catch the bear. He swallowed the bear to eat up the honey. He swallowed the honey to trap the moth. He swallowed the moth to munch through his knitting. He swallowed the knitting muffled clock. Tick tock, tick tock. So like super interesting. Um, I buy up these books and I use them. And I also like to use them when I talk about like theme and variation with older grades. I'm like, oh, here's the original song. Here are the options. So like I can show them all sorts of different things. And then like we'll sometimes take a song like uh, Rattlin Bog or whatever, or uh, Green Grass Grew All Around, or something where it's, or 12 Days of Christmas, something is cumulative, and they take that framework and they change all the things. Kids love doing that, changing out the lyrics for different things, and they have to sing that version. Well, this is a great, like, example of, like, here's the original, here's the new. So that's one fun one. Uh, there once was a cowpoke who swallowed an ant. This one is uh, written by uh, Helen Ket. Kateman, illustrated by Will Terry, and let's see who the publisher is. Albert Whitman and Company. I think you can get this one on Amazon, but if not, check the discount site. There once was a cowpoke who swallowed an ant, a fiery thing with a Texas-sized sting. The cowpoke pa panted and his voice got higher. yippee ki -yay! my stomach's on fire. He swallowed the road rug and her hungry and lean to dash right in and clean up the scene. So this one is like, you're going to have to like go ahead through it and be like, mm, how am I, because it's, it's not exactly the same sort of rhyme scheme. So you got to get used to that. Obviously I am not because <laughs> I just stumbled up. So let's see, he, uh, okay. So this one, this one gets really interesting. Uh, he swallows all these weird things. Um, yeah. So he's <laughs> trying to like get all this stuff. Um, he swallows like a longhorn, a boar, a snake, a dillo, an armadillo, a lizard, roadrunner, spider, ant, right? And so then it gets to the point where like he swallows um, all this stuff and it goes, he sat on his horse, took his rope off the shelf. If I want it done right, I'll do it myself, which was a, an amazing Southern accent. I'm sure you'll all agree. Okay, so he swallowed his rope, he swallowed his horse, and then he swallowed himself, of course. 
because he wanted to catch all the things that were in his own stomach. I don't know how this is possible, but okay. Uh, so they all come out, out race the longhorn with a lasso of flap and out race the boar, his hooves just to tap and out slithered the snake in a very fast crawl. So all just all comes out and then at last comes out the ant. And then he goes back home, goes to bed. So another good fun variant. So these are things that I would use in like a, a like I said, in like a theme and variation lesson, but also they're super fun to put in a sub tub um, and have a substitute teacher be like, oh, hey, well, you know the original song. Here's a different version. Okay, one more, because th there's a whole list of these on Amazon, but one more. Um, there was an old dragon who swallowed a knight. This one was fun. My old, uh, <laughs> my old house, my next door neighbor's daughter, who is in first grade, is like, hey, David. I found a book. Well, so she didn't go to my school because she would have had to call me Mr. Rao. Hey, David, I found a book that I thought you'd like. And so she came up. It was super cute because um, she knows a music teacher. There was an old dragon who swallowed a knight. I don't know why he swallowed the knight. It's not polite. There was an old dragon who swallowed a steed that galloped around at a terrible speed. Oh, how the, how the dragon wished it would stop. That clippity 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 clop. He swallowed the steed right after the night. I don't know why he swallowed the night. It's not polite. Okay, this is my favorite part. When the horse, the steed, sorry, lands on the night and like <laughs> crunch. So anyway, it's a super cute book. Let's see what it gets to in the end. Um, oh yeah, okay, this is, it gets a little gross, but fine. So uh, with all... <laughs> With all of that water, he started to bloat, and that's when the dragon ro roared, and I quote, Okay, enough, I've had enough, more than enough of this swallowing stuff. Maybe I've been a tad impolite, perhaps I should only have swallowed the knight. And then he burps out everything. So a moat, uh, a castle, uh, along with the tassel, the lady... Uh, the cook, the book, the squire, the fire. So uh, this is a super fun one um, if you want you know, just something, um, it's a super fun one for, uh, rhyming words, also theme variation, also you can put in your subtub, but it's just a super great book. Uh, this is The Dragon Who Swallowed the Night by, uh, Penny Parker Klosterman, illustrated by Ben Mantle, and this one was published by, uh, Random House, so I'm sure you could find this one online. I'm almost sure, I mean, like, on Amazon, I'm almost sure it would be there, but, Anyway, all of the, those three books are all in the, are on the links page. Um, and they're there. If you, if you go to my Amazon, like ideas list, my wish list, um, you can go and then just pull the ISBN number. Or if it's not, uh, if you don't want to buy it on Amazon, don't buy it on Amazon. Sometimes it won't be there and you should go to like a discount book website, like betterworldbooks.com or thriftbooks.com or bookoutlet.com or abebooks.com. There are lots of different, you can just search like discount book website and it's basically like a, um, I mean, clearance book websites. You can find lots of different options for that. Don't have to buy on Amazon. But if you go to my Amazon pages, you can buy on Amazon. Sometimes it's quicker that way. But you can also on the Amazon listing, even if the book is like not really in print or for sale, Amazon keeps the listing there in case like it comes back in stock, but also then they have the ISBN number, they have the author, ISBN number, the ISBN, the author, all of the information there if you need it. And I know I always say that, but I just want to always mention it so like you're not like, oh, I have to buy it on Amazon or whatever. David's trying to get us to buy it on Amazon. No, you could buy it anywhere. Buy it from your local bookseller, but it's all cataloged there on Amazon because it's just sort of um, easy to do that. Okay, so some lesson ideas and how you might adapt and things that might work for you. So, um, I have this weird schedule where like some of my classes are in person and some are online and I know a lot of people are dealing with that. And so what's tricky now is that like I'm getting to the point where like my primary grades are doing lots of like um, reading rhythms or using popsicle sticks to make rhythms or drawing on whiteboards or doing a lot of like tactile stuff um, or playing instruments. And so it's just like, how do you adapt that to online? So that's one of the things I want to talk about. And my, my older kids, my third, fourth, and fifth graders are doing lots of playing, like, um, metallophones, xylophones, glockenspiels, playing drums, um, doing, again, lots of really tactile stuff that, like, how do you make that work for online? So I wanted to talk a little bit about how I'm adapting and changing those lessons for the kids who are in school and for the kids who are at home. Um, so 
some ideas for that. Let me start with just my primary grades. No matter whether it's in person or online, we usually start, they come in and we have a little focus uh, thing to do. For my in-person kids, they come in and on the screen, there's like, it says, welcome to music. And there's a little bit emoji of me doing something, throwing a snowball or playing a tuba or something, right? Um, just to like get their attention as they come in, sit down, find their spot. I make sure everybody's there and then we get going. For my kids online, um, I always give them a little bit of time to come in to connect or whatever. And then I always do something for attendance. Sometimes it's a sung hello, so-and-so, they sing back. Sometimes sometimes it's, hey, you're going to tell me your favorite color just to let me know that you're here. So, you know, uh, you know, David, it, are you here? And then I'd be like, yes, and my favorite color is red. You know, like I, I, that's their attendance. But it's also like a way for me to get to know them better when I don't really get to see them in school. And um, it's a way for us to just connect, for them to share something out with the group. Um, with my younger kids, I'll tell you, on Zoom now, um, I let them do their attendance. And then I hit mute all. Do not allow a kid to unmute. Because otherwise, my, my current kindergarten class, my first graders were great. My current kindergarten class, they are always unmuting and interrupting and talking about blah, blah, blah. Um, there's the one girl who gets like really, really close to the camera and always shows us her really gross mouth. I think it's to show us she lost a tooth. I don't know. But it's always like, look here. And then I'm like, oh, half masticated like goldfish crackers. Ew. Um, but anyway, so I've been <laughs> sort of muting and been like, here we go. So, but um, after that, we always do the same thing. And that's, uh, we take out Tabby the, the copycat. Now I've been using this all year long. How do I adapt this? With my... Um, with my kids who are in school, um, Tabby comes out and does all sorts of things, and Tabby's our copycat. So the poem is, copycat, copycat, one, two, three. Do what I do after me. Anything I do, you do the same. That's how you play the copycat game. Yeah, that's it, that's it, that's the poem. It's a really good poem. Yeah, except that um, at this point, my kids have done it so many times, where I, I forget how many rotations we are in there. There's a little tiny bit bored with it. So what we do is we say the poem, and then we'll do like um, four or five examples of clapping, and they clap back, or patting, and they clap back. And so I've been... Uh, as we're doing this with my K1 and 2 in school, um, I've been standing there with my stickers and I go, oh my gosh, you did it exactly like me. You mirrored exactly what I was doing. Use the correct hand. You got all the rhythms and the right, the right dynamics. I'm so impressed, you know, and like give out stickers or whatever. So that's to like get them a little bit more focused as we get started. And in those at-person kiddos, we do clapping, we do padding. Sometimes we'll do snapping, depending on the grade. Sometimes we'll do stomping, depending on the grade. Um, and we'll just do back and forth echoing. Uh, so that's like, do some claps, do the poem again. Do some pats, do the poem again. Do whatever, do the poem again. And then um, one other thing I include is some vocal exploration, which I'll show you in just a second. Um, just a little bit of it, because again, in person, we do have our really good air purifier in the room um, that the district bought us. Um, but we're still, I'm just not doing very much singing, just a tiny, tiny little bit uh, with masks in distance, with the air purifier all going, uh, but really hardly any of that. So I'll show you that in just a second of what I do for the vocal exploration. I also do movement exploration. And so a lot of times I'll like say, okay, we're going to take a trip. <clears throat> so when we take our trip, we got to make sure we have everything. So the kids stand up and I'm like, ooh, check, make sure that you have your passport. And then you look, ooh, here it is. Okay, flip to the right page. Okay, good. Now make sure you've got the right, in do you have also your credit cards? Ooh, check, ooh, or cash. Ooh, okay, you know, mm -hmm, here I got. Um, all right, and so we go through things like, okay, we're now grab your suitcase. <laughs> oh no, you forgot to pack your suitcase. So then we like get down on our knees and we start packing things in. Oh, you forgot this other thing. Quick, run up and go grab, you know. And so it's just a thing to like, give them a focus for the day some sort of activity some sort of thing sometimes we're like going to go buy groceries and so ooh, uh, can you reach the the eggs way up there ooh, okay oh don't forget to get the cheese mm -hmm. and we're reaching right we're reaching left we're reaching high we're reaching low um, sometimes we have to turn around so we have to run to the grocery store or we have to go very slowly because our, the baby is sleeping or whatever so we'll go to the grocery store we'll go to the zoo we'll go on a hike we'll go um, on an airplane and then you gotta fly the airplane but whatever it is it's getting kids up and off their seat you can stay non-locomotor you can stay on your dot but you can still sort of have this little adventure together so that they're up and moving and trying something different um in the lesson and usually i try and theme that around whatever i'm doing for the day so if i'm teaching like 
Let's see what's a great example. If, um, if I'm doing a dinosaur exploration, uh, we have a dinosaur vocal exploration. Sometimes I have a dinosaur book to go with it. I try and sort of theme them all together. So um, it's basically like my main lesson is like, oh, we're going to do peas porridge hot. That's good. And we're going to build off that and do rhythm activities and blah, blah, blah. Okay. Then we're going to go to the grocery store to make sure that we have peas. We're going to do, uh, you know, whatever, you know, something to sort of match that theme. Um, Tabby plays a big part of this with K1 and 2. They really like her, especially for my, um, my kids who are remote. Um, and, and I do this, Brittany just asked, do you do that movement activity with mostly lower grades or upper grades or both? Uh, mostly lower, but I have done it for upper grades and they'll sometimes buy in. It depends on the kids. It depends on what it is we're doing. Um, but mostly lower, usually K1, 2, and 3. 4 and 5, not as much. But just because it's something to get them up and moving or whatever. Um, so anyway, it's just, it's fun for the younger kids especially. So Tabby comes in. What I've found for my um, remote kids, my kids who are not with us, they love Tabby. I mean, like all my students love Tabby because she's sassy. So Tabby has changed the poem in recent weeks. Yes, the new poem goes like this. Copycat, copycat, one, two, three. Four or five treats made just for me. And that's not how the poem goes. It goes copycat, copycat, one, two, three. Do what I do after B. I like my version better. How about this? Copycat, copycat, one, two, treats. Do forget to bring me treats. Anyone who brings me the treats. Treats, 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 Tabby is the best treats. Okay, that's an interesting take, but that's not actually the poem. I disagree. So anyway, so Tabby gets sassy. She's been changing things up a little bit. Kids think that's hilarious. I find that my kids who are in distance, I have to be like a little bit sillier because they have, they don't, they, they need something to pull their attention. I don't know. This, this kindergarten class is really interesting. They, they like, there's always like the one kid who's in the car at McDonald's phoning in from the drive through There's the kid who like is rolling around on the ground or whatever. So, I mean, it's just, it's nuts. So I'm doing whatever I can to keep their attention. One of my favorite things when we get first get started is I say like, oh, where is Tabby? I wonder if I can't find her. And then I do like this thing where like she's on the screen and I'm like, I don't know, I'm looking for Tabby. I can't seem to see her. Anyway, I don't know where Tabby is, but if you see Tabby, maybe you could tell me because I need, we, you know, we need to get started. And so like, I don't think she's over here. You know, like I've gotten really good at doing the like Tabby jumps onto the screen um, and kids think that's hilarious, but it's just little silly things like that that get them engaged. Who knows why? Okay, so we do our little attendance. Um, we get started. We do uh, some sort of body percussion, something with Tabby, some sort of movement. Um, then I love to do vocal explorations. And I've shared this with y'all before, um, how, how I do this. So in, in school, um, I'm able to airplay my, um, my iPad. And so that means that I have an Apple TV and I'm able to just project whatever I'm doing on the screen up to... Um, up to the main screen. For my kids at home, there's a way through Zoom. If I have my iPad connected with my like uh, my charging cable, I'm able to mirror the display there too. You can also do it through AirPlay, but it's for me, it lags a little bit. So I like to just plug it into my computer and do an AirPlay that way. So I'm able to show them what's on the screen of my iPad. And the one thing that I've, I've shared this before, but the one thing that's been so helpful is um, if you see this little dot up here in the corner, that's um, if you go to um, the the settings for your iPad and you go to a part that says uh, accessibility, you can go and you can add this. It's basically, it's a home button. Um, it's an extra home button. It's an, it's assistive touch. So um, it helps, um, it, it just basically creates a little home button that like moves around the screen. You can tell it to do things. You can have it take screenshots. You can have it do all sorts of stuff. But what's really nice is that no matter where you are, it shows. So if I'm air playing this or it's plugged in, um, this little dot will show up and I can move it around and use it as a cursor. You know, so like if I'm uh, doing like my vocal explorations with kids, I can be in the back of the room. It's air played up to my screen and I can do this sort of a thing. And the kids see the little dot moving and I'm just back there manipulating my iPad. So for vocal exploration, it's especially nice if I'm giving an example and then I'm moving along and they can sort of see where it is. It's like the little bouncing ball in the lyrics almost, like you can see and follow along where something is. Um, what I've been doing with the vocal explorations, I've been using them pretty much every day, sort of quickly, like three or four or five pages maybe. Um, I'll do the example, I'll let them sort of do their own sound along, uh, maybe once or twice and then we move on. 
with with some it's really fun like this one is it is pretty easy and i'll always say like okay where is the dinosaur is it high is it medium is it low okay it's low so then our voice should be low to match okay ooh. and then these little wavy things are they they big or are they little or are they in between what do you think and they're like oh they're little waves okay so in my wave my voice should just make little wavy sounds like ooh. i shouldn't go because if i do that that'd be like huge waves and i don't want that i want little waves okay and so it's just sort of like helping them see that like how the visual correlates to the sound to make some of those connections. Some kids get it, but other kids need that help with correlating. So I always, I, I always try to hit that every day. I, I also make these sort of silly. So this one is like jump up and over the, the T-Rex. Well, we sure try. Where, where'd the little dot go? Here's the little dot. So uh, we, we start low because the beginning starts low and it goes, ooh. at least that's what it should do. But what happens is, ooh. Chomp, 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 chomp. And the little T-Rex eats the dot. Ah, T-Rex, what are you doing? Don't do that. Ooh, chomp, 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 chomp. And he eats like two or three times. And I say, okay, here's what we're going to have to do. When we get up to near his mouth, we're going to have to go fast past it because there's no, then he won't catch us. Ooh, and so then we make it pass. But um, it's really nice to be able to use this little dot on the iPad to show kids where we are. So then if I'm airplaying or if I'm using it on Zoom, um, they can follow the cursor along no matter if I'm, you know, I, I don't have to be there in front of them. It's especially nice for me. Then I can be at the back of the room. I can be monitoring kids or I can be watching the Zoom or whatever so that I'm not, um, I'm not sort of stuck watching that exact thing. I can be off if that makes sense. I can, I can be monitoring the class or monitoring the Zoom as they do their thing. I also love to do that where uh, I'll take the vocal exploration, I'll show them and I'll say, you know, I've gotten really good at this. How about I try it? And if I do a really good job, you show me a thumbs up. But if I make a mistake, I probably won't. But if I make a mistake, you show me a thumbs down. So then I'll do like a really easy vocal exploration and I will absolutely do it wrong on purpose. So if it's like a curve that goes up, I'll do like, ooh, and they'll be watching a little curse will move and my voice won't do what it should. And after they've done, they've done this, they've seen me do it, they've seen me give examples, they know like, mm, that doesn't, it doesn't match, right? So then it's funny for them to be like, wrong, Mr. Rao. And I'll do it another way. I'll do it super, super duper wrong again, and they'll, they'll catch me. And then once I've done that three or four times, especially with first grade or second grade, I can go in and I can be a little bit more nuanced. So for example, if I'm doing like, um, if I'm doing this, this little picture, I can start and I can do, and so instead of going to what it should be, I would do this. Did I get it right? No, you did not get it right. Okay, well, hold on. Did I get the first part right? Yeah. How about this part? Oh, no, I didn't get that part right. Okay, hold on. So that should, I'm starting low and I need to go up high. Ooh. Did I get part of it right? I got, I got part, part of it right? Okay, so hold on here. Ooh. Is that right? Yeah, okay. Ooh. Is that right? Good, okay. Ooh. Was that right? No, that part was wrong. Okay, so that goes from high and then it goes, oh, down, okay. Did I get that right? Oh, I did. Okay, let me put it all together. So it's it's nice for the older grades when I've done enough examples that I can sort of do that. I can piecemeal it out and be like, how about this part? How about this right? So then instead of it just like I'm getting the whole thing right or the whole thing wrong, I can get parts of it right. They can help identify what those parts are. It really does test their ears. It tests their, you know, are they are they actually watching and paying attention? It really does get them to um, be more engaged in that. And so then it's not just them doing sirens or whatever. It's them also critically thinking like, did he get it right? Am I listening? How, how does that visual match what actually happened or does it? And it's sort of a, a fun, fun extra thing. Also with K1 and 2, I do a book of the day. I don't feel bad about this. I, <laughs> this is a year where everything is weird. We can't sing. Um, we can't really do instruments the way we normally do, whatever. So I'm pulling in all my books and I am doing all sorts of things. What kind of books am I doing? Um, I'm doing uh, musician bios. I'm doing stories. I'm doing songs that are turned into books. I'm doing features about instruments. I'm doing experiences. Um, I'm doing all sorts of different things. So a couple examples. 
Um, this one, What a Wonderful World, illustrated by Tim Hopgood. It's based on the song. Beautiful illustrations. Um, just super, super cool illustrations. Um, based on the text of the song made famous by Louis Armstrong. Right? Okay. So, with that, instead of me singing it, I press play on the Louis Armstrong version and I flip through with my document camera as we're watching or as, as the song goes through so they can see the visual that matches the words. I do this for a couple reasons. One, I mean like, okay, they could hear me sing it, but they hear me do stuff all the time. I want them to hear the Louis Armstrong version because it is so iconic and I want them to be like, ooh, I've heard that before. Or maybe I haven't heard that before, but either way, what a cool thing. Um, after we read or, you know, do the book, I'm going to get a double whammy out of it because I'm going to talk about, oh yeah, it's a famous song and blah, blah, blah. But I'm just going to say it's also made famous by Louis Armstrong. <laughs> and then I'll show them a quick profile of who that is. So I've got my, you know, my bulletin board set with my, all my musician profiles for the year, which I made years ago. But now I take, I, I mean, I print them out and put them in the hallway, but I also took the Louis Armstrong one and now I show that up on the screen. I say, here's Louis Armstrong. Here's what he's known for. Here's the day he was born, blah, blah, blah. And so instead of just like having the book, um, they get to see the book, beautiful book. They get to hear the original song. They get to learn a little bit more about Louis Armstrong um, so that they can, um, make all those connections. Tammy just said, would love to hear your tips on what to look for in a document camera. I actually uh, don't like document cameras. I know I said I use my document camera. Um, I, document cameras are becoming sort of old tech. They're like oddly expensive for what you get, which is not much. What I found is I can plug my phone in to my computer or my iPad or whatever, and I can t like turn on the camera. And if I airplay that device, to my screen because I have an Apple TV. I know it's it's something I'm able to do. If I mirror that device, then they can see with my phone or my iPad's camera. And my phone or iPad camera is actually like a hundred times better than a document camera camera. So I, I know, I hate using my own device, but if it's my iPad, that's a school device. And I use that and I just mirror whatever it's using and I mirror it up there so that you can see. But the, those cameras are so much better than the document camera. Um, so anyway, but, but it's a nice quick way to get a, big, a great big visual. So that's like an example of a song. And sometimes I sing the song, uh, for example, Oh, a hunting we will go, a hunting we will go. Now this one, because I'm singing the song and I, I'm trying to limit my singing, my personal singing, um, because I don't want to, you know, number one, I, I want to save my voice, but also I don't want to risk um, spreading germs. So. Um, if I own the book, it's a book I have, it belongs to me, I take the book home, I take my camera, and I um, I take a video of myself reading the book. And you could do like like this, where you're standing reading, or they also make a, like a swing arm, sort of a document camera thing that will hold your phone, so it like looks straight down on the book, and I have that on my Amazon page if you're interested to see which one I bought. Um, but it just takes a, a video, and I take a video of myself singing and reading the book. Again, if I own this book, um, it it would be like me reading it or singing it in class, but it just takes the actual act of me doing that in class out because I don't want to, I don't want to risk it this year. So I take a video. But any, uh, you know, songs um, like Coat of Many Colors, uh, that one I'll play the Dolly Parton song and I'll flip through the book with a document camera live. Um, but if it's something like this where like I'm singing, I usually video myself ahead of time, either sitting here with the book like this or sitting with the book under like basically a document camera recording. So those are books that I use that I sing. Um, another example um, of one that we would, that I've been doing is this one called um, Peppy Sings a New Song. And um, I, I like any sort of book that uh, opens up my kids' imagination and uh, gets them to think in different ways. So this one, Peppy Sings a New Song by Laura Lundqvist. Um, I'll just read a couple quick pages. These illustrations are gorgeous, by the way. Peppy the parrot lived with Peter. Peter loved space. Every night while Peter stargazed, Peppy sang him a special space song. I wonder if you know the song. Twinkle, twinkle, little stars. 
satellites, planets, galaxy, Mars, comet, Venus, telescope, Jupiter, rocket, astero, rope, Saturn, Mercury, Milky Way, Neptune, orbit, moon, sun, ray. So it's not just the twinkle, twinkle. We're making this scientific. It's very exciting. Peppy loved singing, but Peter seemed a little tired of his song. He'd been singing the same one every night. So Peppy decided to go find some new things to sing about. His first stop was Manuel's Bakery. Hello, Peppy, said Manuel. Would you like to find all the tasty things in my bakery? Oh my gosh. Whisk, decorate, pastries, rolling pin, cupcake, sprinkles, dough. Icing, cookie cutter, messy. Soon Peppy had batches of tasty things to sing about, so his next stop was Clive's Music Studio. Hello, Peppy, said Clive. Would you like to find all the musical things in my studio? Saxophone, maracas, accordion, xylophone bow for the violin, trombone, bass, electric bass, amplifier, flute, shh. Soon Peppy had a symphony of musical things to sing about. So his next stop was, so he goes to lots of different places. Let's see, he goes to uh, Aurora's Art Studio. He goes to Malcolm's Market where he finds food. He goes to Cynthia's Dog Park where he sees all different breeds of dog. Um, he goes to, oh, and then he's, he's ready for Peter one more time. The new song goes like this. Twinkle, twinkle, little flute, poodle, xylophone, cobalt, fruit, carrot, saxophone, icing, bow, violet, terrier, canvas, dough, pastries, whippet, sculpture, kale, bulldog, easel, trombone, scale. Peppy's song was a hit, and Peter was inspired. So now, every night, Peter and Peppy sing their special new song together. Twinkle, twinkle. Hmm, what could we add? And then, I mean, there's so many things you could do with this, like come up with your own words to the same song. If this were a normal year, my kids could do that and then sing it. Um, or if it was an at, if it were kids who were at home, you know, a second grade or third grade class, they could easily take that song and change the words, come up with things from around their house. It might be kind of crazy, but it'd be a fun assignment. <laughs> they come up with weird stuff, who knows? Um, but it'd be super fun to, to see what they come up with. But a super cute book called Peppy Sings a New Song by Laura Lundqvist. So this is another one where like I might uh, read it at home and then sing it for them in class. So they get that song that they know. They get so much vocabulary, like an English language learner uh, would get so much out of this. Um, and your teacher, your ELL teachers are going to be like, oh my gosh, you're doing so much vocabulary. Like, because there's a picture and then the word and you can point to it as you go. So a super cool song, um, super cool book you can use. One more. Um, and this one I think I've shared before called Dinosaur Roar. And this book by Pat, Paul and Henrietta Strickland is great for musical opposites. But um, let's see. Dinosaur Roar by Paul and Henrietta Strickland. Dinosaur roar. Dinosaur squeak. Dinosaur fierce. Dinosaur meek. Dinosaur fast. Dinosaur slow. Now, I think I, I learned this uh, from Jennifer Donovan at my ORF levels in my movement the movement part of the lesson. And there, there are so many things you can do with it. My adaptation for COVID year 2020, 2021 is in your own personal space, in your like dot spot, you can try and re, redo or represent one of the things on the page uh, or, or the things on the page as we go. So strong versus weak or long and short, like they have to make their body match that. So this is another fun book that you can pair with a ton of other things in a lesson. Dinosaur vocal explorations, like I just showed. Um, and, you know, this can be go, like, go along with the theme, but it's something that's going to get them up and get them moving. You can also use this to talk about opposites. You could say, what are some other opposites we know? Musical opposites? Any kind of opposites? What can you think of? And so it's just a fun book um, that opens up a lot of different opportunities.
And then another thing that we do um, that I do a little bit with in class and some with at home, well, mostly with at home is I do lots of singing with my at home kids. With my in class kids, I might record myself at home or record myself after the school day's over in my classroom singing a song that then I shared it with students as a video. If it were an in class thing and I wanted to share a song with them, I would record myself so I'm not singing in front of them uh, live. Um, but if it's kids at home, I, I can. So my kids right now, my kindergartners, were doing uh, Farmer Brown's Cow, which if you don't know this song, it's in, I think it's online too, but um, it's in Farm Sounds and the Sound of Music by Lynn Kleiner. This is from Music Rhapsody. Super cute book. Um, but anyway, Farmer Brown's Cow, um, there's something wrong with her. And she can't quite explain what's wrong. What's wrong? I like to call her Bessie. I don't know. I call all cows Bessie. Then. Anyway, what's wrong um, with you today? Can you can you tell me though? Moo. Yeah, I don't understand. I don't understand cow. So, can you maybe tell me what's wrong? I think she has a headache. Moo, 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 Hmm. Did you eat something? Is it a belly ache? Moo. Moo, 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 moo. Oh. Moo, 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 moo. Okay, so I think that maybe, did you like, are your ears hurting you? Moo. 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 Okay, I, I don't know speak cow. So anyway, so anyway, there's this song and it goes like this. It goes, Farmer Brown had a cow, had a cow, had a cow. She got sick, I don't know how. All she said was moo. Okay, so that's like me just sing right now. I, I usually sing it in the sing the C of key of ugh, the key of C, <laughs> good Lord, um, uh, so that kids can do the moo. And then there's a cute little, hey, 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 wouldn't you say that would make it go away? Hey, 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 wouldn't you say that's all for today? There are different versions of that. But the cow can only really say moo. And then her friends from the barnyard try and bring her things to make her feel feel better because she has a really sick tummy. Moo, 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 mm -hmm. moo. Yeah, so anyway, so her really sick tummy. Um, but anyway, her friend the pig brought chocolate cake, chocolate cake, chocolate cake to see if that would help her headache. Moo. All she said was moo. Hey, 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 wouldn't you say? And so like me and the sheep are singing this thing to the cow and the cow's like, mm, because the cow's trying to tell us that her, her, her hoof hurts. Moo, 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 moo. Or maybe it's her stomach. Moo. Anyway, so the cow can only say moo. And so the kids at home are like dying because they're like, the kids are him, it's your him. And I'm like, I don't know, your mics are muted. I can't tell what you're saying. And I don't know what the cow's saying. So anyway, so the, there are all these different characters that come in and try and help the cow, but the cow is just not feeling good. It's a super cute little song. There's another song we pair later on the week. Um, wake up, you sleepy heads, and go and find the cattle. Wake up, you sleepy heads, and go and find the cows. And it's a cute little song. But these are songs that I would sing with kids, and it's sort of like a sung story. So my kids who are in person, I, I don't need them to sing along. They can sing along the moo part. But more it's just like to hear them for them to hear me sing, for them to hear singing, for them to hear a story, uh, different verses. And it's just a fun little song that you can include. I, I always stress out like, oh, the kids aren't actively singing or aren't actively whatever. But like, it, it they also should be listening. They also should be engaged with critical thinking. They also should be trying to interpret a story. They're also, sh I mean, music is not just them singing and doing. Like, that's a big part of it and I want them to do that. But in a weird year like this, it's also okay to like have a sung story that the kids follow along with. And then they can add something later. Maybe they could add body percussion. Maybe they could add clapping or maybe they could add a movement that would go along with it while they're actively listening. But um, it doesn't have to be them singing for it to be a, a great part of the lesson. Okay, I know I'm almost out of time. So um, let me just say a couple more quick things. Um, again, when I'm doing 
lessons for kids at home and, and um, in class. It's different. It's, and so um, my in-class kids are getting a lot more participation and moving and instruments and whatever. And my kids at home are getting a lot more singing. My older grades, three, four, and five, we're having so much fun with especially cumulative songs. So um, Rattlin' Bog is a really fun one. Um, or like... Oh, what's the, oh, you could do Green Grass Grew All Around, which is sort of Rattlin' Bog, just a different version, sort of different words. Um, we're also doing Ache and Drum, where the kids are coming up with things. Um, and th it's it's really fun for them to come up with different foods. And then, like like I said, because I have my um, my iPad, and I can mirror that, I, can, I have a, an app where I can draw. And so I'm able to draw um, whatever Ache and Drum they come up with. This was our Ache and Drum from just the other day. He had um, hot dog eyes, uh, Twizzler eye, eyeglasses, a carrot nose, gummy worm lips, lettuce shirt, bacon fingers, cookie dough pants, watermelon feet, and spaghetti hair. Obviously all just masterfully drawn <laughs> by me. But um, it's so much fun because then those kids who are at home, they can sing along. Um, they can also feel like they're actively a part of it because they're helping contribute things to, to Aiken. Um, I can pull my favorite folk song set for Aiken Drum and I can give like a little bit more of historical context. I can show them on a map where it came from. I can. Um, what's really cool is in that favorite folk song set, I have some of the, the history of what people said was in the moon. Like some people think there's a bunny and some people think there's a man and some people think there's a woman with a necklace and I can show them all of that through my favorite folk song set and mirror that and then we can sing the song and do our thing. Um, I'm on an iPad, Jennifer, and the app that I'm using to draw is called Sketches School. There are other versions of Sketches, I think, uh, but I believe this one is free. At least we all have it on our iPads. So I'm going to assume it's free because <laughs> to mass purchase for the district would be a lot of money. So I think that it's free, but it's called Sketches School, I think. And it has different brushes, markers, all sorts of stuff. So like Rattlin' Bog is super fun because we can sing and add along the way. Um, and then the kids can do actions like a tree, you know, a limb on a tree, a branch on a limb on a tree, a twig on a branch on a limb on a tree, a nest on a twig on a branch on a limb on a tree. And they can do all of those. They can be active at home doing those actions and singing along. A can drum, they can be a part of it. With my kids at home, I, I also really push the musician profiles. I'm doing those in class too, um, where we'll have one musician for the day and really focus on that person. So yesterday it was Michael Jackson. Um, today it was uh, Johnny Cash. Tomorrow it's uh, J-Lo. Uh, who else? Beyonce's on Friday. I can't remember. There's another person in, in the mix. And I have a whole set for fourth grade, a whole set for fifth grade. I'm just basically taking... Um, I did a bulletin board set where there are 30 musicians for every month and you can print it out and put it out and it shows like a little profile of that person and a picture and a little bit about them. And I'm just taking those basically, um, putting them in my PowerPoint, sort of extrapolating on them a little bit, getting a few more pictures of the artist and then pulling in some videos of the, uh, the musician singing or playing or whatever it is they're doing just to give a little bit more context because this is a great year to take the time to say like, let's learn about music history and music culture and music in popular culture, you know, just musical connections. So I've shown my kids way more musician profiles than I ever would have in another normal year. And I'm hoping next year I can take these and sort of pair them back, maybe just show one video or um, just show a little tiny bit to give kids the same sort of experience, but maybe a little bit less so we can spend more time singing and doing other stuff. But I really hit those hard with the kids, especially who are at home, because then we can stop, we can discuss, we can talk about different things. I could do a quick at-home quiz. Um, one of my favorite things to do for my kids online is to do a chat quiz where I say, okay, in the chat, which is, it's only sent, it sends it directly to me. They can't chat with each other. I turned that setting off. Um, in the chat, you tell me one thing you know about their musician profile from yesterday, Michael Jackson. Tell me one thing you know, and they'll have to write down whatever in the chat. It's a chat quiz, and if they put anything down about Michael Jackson at all, they get points, and if they don't get anything, they don't get points. So that kid who's like camera off, mic off, not doing anything, are they there? If they respond, then I know that they've been listening. If they don't respond, then sorry, I don't know what happened, but, but we have the chat quiz. So it's like, you have 60 seconds to tell me anything about Michael Jackson. If you remember anything from yesterday, you'll have a lot to tell me, right? But I, I take that time to, um, to have a little bit of, um, musicians and culture talk time. 
Okay, that was a lot for an hour, <laughs> but um, I hope you got some ideas from the books or the resources or the games or the things that we're doing. Um, also with my kids at home, we do a lot of interactive games and so many of those, if you're interested, I've got all those Valentine's games and things bundled together on my Teachers Pay Teachers if you want it. Um, but it, it, those are things that I know that are easy to sort of slip in either online or in person to get kids again more active depending on what it is you're doing, um, a resource to have available. Okay, so uh, if you have any more questions, please check out the links page. If you don't find what I've talked about there, you can send me a direct message either on Facebook or Instagram. You can email me at makemomentsmatter at gmail.com, but I'd love to try and help a little bit more. I'm actually not going to be here next week, but I'll be back the week after that. So um, next week is a, is a week off. I think in sports, it's a bye, right? <laughs> By week, but um, and it's not because I'm going to be recovering from the Super Bowl, but my partner's having a surgery um, on his foot in a week, so I'm going to be there and helping him recover. So I'll be gone next Monday, but I'll be back the week after that, and I hope to see you all there. Um, have a great week and uh, have fun with your kids. Bye, everyone.